My name is Jared Green. I work for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service at the Eastern Massachusetts National Wildlife Refuge Complex, and I'm also a graduate student at the University of Georgia researching the effects of head starting on a blending turtle repatriation project. So we're actually going to try and catch a juvenile turtle. Um, we catch all of our turtles once in the spring and once in the fall. Uh, for our head started turtles, they wear radio transmitters that have radios that need to be swapped out every six months to replace the battery. Um, our juvenile turtles, since they're a little bit larger, they can wear a radio that gets a larger battery. And so this guy actually doesn't need a radio swap, but we still capture them um, each year in the spring and the fall just to see how much they're growing from the previous capture. The Blanding's turtle is a threatened or endangered species in all of the states in New England in which it occurs. Here in Massachusetts, they're listed as a th uh, state's threatened species. And so two of, the, two of the larger populations in New England occur um, on wildlife refuges in Massachusetts. And so what we're doing is we're trying to start a new population here at Assabet Refuge, um, taking hatchlings from one of our other refuges. Um, and so how we're doing that is we're taking, uh, we go out in June to one of the, one of the refuges that has a, a stable population, and we actually go out and protect all the, the nests that the females lay. Um, we do this by going out to the nest site um, and watching the females as they lay their eggs and then putting metal fencing down uh, to protect the nests from predators such as raccoons and coyotes. Then we come back uh, a couple months later and actually remove the hatchlings uh, from the exclosures and then half of those hatchlings uh, get released right into the wetland um, at the donor site and then the other half uh, come to Assabet to be released. And so half of that half that comes here actually uh, is directly released into the, the wetlands here at Assabet and then the other half uh, we actually head start which is basically just raising the hatchlings in captivity over their first winter to increase their, their growth rate. Um, and how that happens is the turtles are kept in warm water and they're being fed every day. And so that actually increases their growth rate by three to four times what it would be normally in the wild. And our hope with this is that when we release these head starter turtles into the wetland, um, is that there'll be, they'll have a much greater chance of survival, survival just because they're so much larger. How we're going to catch the turtle is using telemetry. Uh, so we've got our antenna and our receiver box. And so the turtle we're going after has a radio transmitter uh, on the back of its shell. And that transmitter has an individual frequency, which I can plug into the receiver box and then uh, using the antenna determine the general direction that it's in. direction that the beeps are loudest at is the direction that the turtle is in. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk in that direction and decrease the gain on the receiver as we walk. And hopefully as we walk, while decreasing the gain, the signal will get louder and louder and that's how we determine exactly where the turtle is. So we've been tracking our turtle for about 30 minutes now uh, and we've got the, the gain turned down pretty low. Um, so we're fairly close to catching, getting to the turtle's location at least. So I'm going to try and pinpoint the turtle's location with the antenna. And then once I think we're right on top of the turtle, I'm actually going to remove the antenna and the cord and just use the tiny antenna on the receiver box. And that'll hopefully give us the exact location of where the turtle's at. And then I'm just going to reach down and try and grab him.
down here somewhere. So this process can take anywhere to a few minutes to up to a couple hours. Because the turtles can actually move pretty fast down on the bottom. So basically what I'm trying to do is just get the turtle um, either reach down and grab it or kind of muck around down on the bottom and force it to come up towards the surface. All right, got him. So, uh, it was actually the, the second option. I was reaching down around the bottom and that caused him to come down from where he was hiding down on the, on the floor of the, the water uh, to come up towards the surface. So, here is our turtle. So this is a juvenile Blanding's turtle. And here on the back of his shell is his radio transmitter. Hmm, give me a second here. Now that we've captured this guy, as I mentioned before, he actually doesn't need to have his radio uh, replaced yet because its battery is still good for another six months. Um, so all we're gonna do with this guy is he's gonna get uh, weighed and measured just to see how much he's grown since we last captured him in October. Um, so each Blanding's turtle uh, gets an individual uh, mark so that we can identify each individual. And how we do that is we actually uh, put little notches um, in their scoots. So if you can see here, um, we file these notches in their, in their scoots um, and we use an identification system where each scoot is assigned a number. Um, and so this turtle is actually uh, Juvenile 29, and so he's got a notch here in his second scoot, which represents uh, 20, and then he's got notches 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and the fourth and fifth, fourth and fifth notches here, so he's Juvenile 29. And so, uh, as you can see with um, Blanding's turtles, the best way to identify them is if you look at their throat, it's really, it's got a really bright yellow pattern to it. Um, painted turtles are the more common species that you'll see around here, and they do have some, some yellow striping on their necks. Uh, but if you look at the Blanding's turtle, on its chin and its throat is completely yellow. And when they're out basking in the sun, they'll stretch their neck out really far. And so that's the, the best way to identify them. Um, also, this, so this guy's a juvenile, and so he's still got quite a bit of growing to do. Um, but an adult Blanding's has a, a really highly domed shell, whereas a, a painted turtle will have a, a much lower, kind of smoother shell. Uh, so that's another, another good way to identify them. This guy weighs 507 grams. So this guy is too young to know the sex yet. Um, as Blending's turtles get older, they show um, kind of different uh, characteristics that you can use to sex it. Uh, one of the things is if you look at the plastron on the turtle, a male, uh, the plastron, will be concave. Um, and part of that is for, so he's able to kind of mount the back of a female's uh, shell. And then females, um, it won't have, it won't be concave, it'll be kind of flat like this. 
and that's just so that uh, there's as much room in there as possible for the eggs uh, when the females are gravid. Um, one other thing too is uh, you can look at the, the tail. Um, the males will have a much uh, thicker tail. Um, and also the uh, cloaca here, um, the distance from which uh, it's from the, the plastron um, is another, another tool. Uh, but probably the easiest thing is just to look at either the, the concavity of the plastron um, or the size of the tail. And one other, one other neat thing um, with the, the turtle, with the Blenheim's turtle, is you can get a, a general idea of how old it is um, by looking at its plastron, which is the bottom part of the shell. Uh, so the plastron will have growth rings, kind of like you would see on a tree. And so you can just basically count these uh, little growth rings on here and get a general estimate of how old the turtle is. Um, now the, the turtles can have uh, kind of extra rings if they had periods of uh, longer growth. So it's not exactly uh, correct, but you can get a, a general idea of how old the turtle is. Um, so if I count this turtle here, I can count... So this turtle is probably around uh, 10 years old based on the number of, of growth rings there. And so this right here is max carapace length. And so that'll be the first thing on yep. the sheet there. And they don't like being held, so they can be a little bit feisty when you're trying to get the measurements. So max CL is going to be 150.81. Straight CL is going to be 148.58. And so the, the top of the shell is called the carapace and the bottom part of the shell is called the plastron. So now we're going to get max plastron length, max PL, that is 156.80, straight PL, straight plastron length, 151.95, now we're going to get shell width, Width is 104.78. Now we're getting shell depth. Fifty nine point nine six for depth. And so all those measurements are just to track how much the turtle is growing from each capture. And so those are all the measurements that we need to do. Uh, now we're just going to take some pictures um, of the shell that we can use for later um, identifying purposes uh, in case this turtle is captured at a point when it doesn't have a radio and the notches have faded.
we're all done with our measurements and so the turtle is ready to go back. We always put them back exactly where we caught them uh, just to have a minimal impact on the turtle. Um, we also try to keep our handling time as quick as possible. So this guy we had um, in our possession for no more than 10 minutes and now he's being released uh, right back to where we caught him from. There he goes. And so now I'm just going to get a GPS location of where the turtle was captured so that we can look at um, what different parts of the wetland the turtles are using and how far they're moving in between captures. And then I'm also going to record some basic uh, habitat measurements um, just so that we can see what type of vegetation um, and water levels the turtles are, are typically inhabiting so that the turtles that we release in the future we can make sure that we're releasing them in areas with habitat that we know the turtles like. Um, so uh, this here is uh, sweet gale and that's a plant that we find a lot of our our blending turtles in or around um, so they seem to like it for one reason or another.